The opinions expressed in the video you are about to see are solely those of Boatest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Boatest.com, and today I'm going to do a full test and performance review on the Prestige 440S. The Prestige 440S is a really nice boat to look at. Five port lights on the port side, a curving hardtop blends in with a radar arch, large windshield raked back, and nice high rails all around. The gunnels curve downward at the bow, and as they moved aft, they're met with a reverse transom. At the bow, you can see dual lifting strikes and a hard chine that carries fully forward to form spray rails. To starboard, four port lights, including a larger one aft for the mid-master stateroom. With no introduction to the boat before we set off, a comfortable helm layout made it easy for me to get familiar with the operation in a hurry. While I can appreciate the convenience of having digital gauges, as a professional captain I also like having analog gauges so at a glance I can see fuel levels, water level, engine temperature, oil pressure, all at a glance. At low speed, the 440S is very responsive to the helm. You can see how we're coming down a very narrow canal with no worries about the 15 mile per hour crosswind. I found that you can stand behind the helm with the sunroof closed, but the windshield frame is right in my line of sight. Once we got up to speed, I was able to get a good feel of her handling characteristics. You're not going to find sport boat turning capability, nor do you want it. This is a boat that commands comfort, not hanging on for dear life. Gentle sedate turns are the norm, and for tighter turns, slow down and let the IPS pods increase their turning angle. The Prestige 440S is such a nice handling boat. But while we're underway, I noticed that it does lean into the wind, so you're going to have to use the trim tabs to counter that. I also find that the 440S comes on plane very quickly with not too much bow rise, but let's measure it and see how it does. So when we did our hole shot, we came up about 10, 12 degrees, which is not bad for losing visibility at all. And when we're on plane, it's about 4 or 5 degrees bow high. When pulling power off, the 440S remains in her 5 degree bow high attitude until the speed bleeds off and the bow comes down. This is a great feature as we see so many boats that squat and leave you with visibility problems. Our 440S had a length overall of 43 feet 9 inches, a beam of 13 feet 8 inches, and a draft of 3 feet 5 inches. With two people on board and 182 gallons of fuel, we had a test weight of just over 22,000 pounds. Our top speed was reached at 3,500 RPM and 34.2 knots. At that speed, we were burning 41 gallons per hour and getting 0.83 nautical miles per gallon for a range of 182 nautical miles. The best cruise numbers are subjective because between 2000 RPM and 2750 RPM, the nautical miles per gallon as well as the range is relatively unchanged. But for the top of the spectrum, 2750 RPM gave us a speed of 24.7 knots. At that speed, we were burning 23 gallons per hour while getting 1.07 nautical miles per gallon for a range of 235 nautical miles with a 10% reserve. We had a time to plane of 5.1 seconds, reached 20 miles per hour in 7.5 seconds, and accelerated through 30 miles per hour in 12.8 seconds. Here we have a 15 mile per hour wind coming from the side running with a fair tide. As you can see, the low power setting on the Volvo Penta IPS joystick was just powerful enough to hold our position, not quite move us against the two. For that, we shifted to high gear and now we have power to spare. So basically what I did was use the high power setting to maneuver to the dock and then switch to low power to lay against. In this manner, I docked the boat with just a gentle tap against the pilings. One of my favorite features was the opening side windows. When docking, I loved it. I had full view of the entire length of the boat. And of course leaving the dock is just as effortless. I'm always happy to see when a builder adds side decks to the design. It's great for handling lines and it really doesn't take too much away from the cockpit area. And I'm happy to see the Prestige is meeting height requirements of the rails. These are 24 inches. As we move forward to the working end of the bow, the rail height increases to 28 inches. A Lumar windlass will retrieve your anchor for you to the side of the windlass storage for your anchor chain, spare line, possibly fenders. Additional safety features, the raised tow rail, and notice the handrail running along the length of the hardtop. But I'd like to see an additional handrail right here to assist you when walking down into the cockpit. Well that's our full test and performance review of the 440S by Prestige. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.